Hello. Welcome to Laser Pulse's overview of embedded research translation. I'm Christopher Rice, Research Translation Communication Lead at Indiana University and with the Laser Pulse Consortium, and I will be guiding you through this learning module today. Laser Pulse stands for Long Term Assistance and Services for Research, Partners for University Led Solutions Engine. This USAID project is led by Purdue University, and its consortium also includes Catholic Relief Services, McCarthy University, University of Notre Dame, and Indiana University. Together, Laser Pulse aims to provide research-driven, practical solutions to critical development challenges in USAID interest countries. Laser Pulse does this by initiating a large network for collaboration between researchers and practitioners building capacity through trainings, and by funding research translation projects all around the world in a variety of fields. As LaserPulse expands its network and reaches more researchers and practitioners, it will offer a series of learning modules. These short courses aim to provide an orientation to LaserPulse's approach, a foundation for mutual understanding of key research and research translation concepts, and also additional resources. This learning module focuses on an introduction to embedded research translation. LaserPulse seeks to connect researchers, thought leaders, innovators, and scientists with those on the ground doing the work, including NGO, civil society, private sector, and government actors around the same development targets, strengthen the capacity of practitioners to navigate, connect, and engage with the world of research and vice versa, and translate discoveries made through research into a format understood and applied by policymakers, end users, partners, and overall stakeholders in practice for development impact. This module's objectives are review Laser Pulse's definition of and approach to embedded research translation, consider the four pillars of embedded research translation identify common challenges and consider best practices, and consider dissemination approaches for translation. Increasingly, researchers, practitioners, donors, policymakers are focused on the impact of collaborative research projects on development outcomes. This idea of how research translates into policy and practice and ultimately to impact has gained steam across disciplines and is an important area of exploration and effort in the development world. A range of terms are used for this, including knowledge translation, translational research, knowledge transfer, and research translation, among others. Many different definitions of research translation exist. How you define translation is often determined by who you are and the goals of your research or institution. Researchers may think about translation one way, practitioners another, policymakers yet another. In our context, research translation generally means translating discoveries made through research into a format that can be understood and applied by policymakers, end users, partners, and overall stakeholders in practice for development impact. A common approach to this form of knowledge transfer is a two-phase process in which research findings are translated into practical applications after research has concluded. Laser Pulse, however, approaches research translation as an integrated component of the entire research cycle, built in from the very beginning of the project instead of as a final phase in the research process. Laser Pulse affirms that research translation is most effective if it is embedded across all phases of the research project from identifying the research topic to disseminating the findings for broader impact and scale. LaserPulse uses the term embedded research translation and defines it as an iterative co-design process among academics, practitioners, and other stakeholders in which research is intentionally applied to a development challenge. LaserPulse believes innovation and discovery can occur in research laboratories, in the field, 
as well as through the learning process throughout the implementation and scaling phases. Pathways to innovative field-tested solutions are reinforced through deep collaboration with the stakeholders closest to the development challenge, and more specifically, practitioners working to solve it. Recognizing that research translation is an iterative, collaborative process, LaserPulse advocates for development solutions to be derived in co-development between practitioners and researchers. LaserPulse's embedded research translation model is rooted in deep collaboration between researchers and practitioners and follows a process from discovery to field-tested solution to wider application and finally to impact. Here you can see LaserPulse's approach to research translation visually. As the graphic demonstrates, LaserPulse promotes a model in which research translation is embedded throughout the research process. Researchers and various development actors engage in close collaboration at the onset of the research project through the dissemination of the translated product and together seek ways for the research to have wider application and impact. Results of this collaboration, detailed in the upper left, include discovery, learning, innovation, and a field-tested solution. Importantly, this is a non-linear process that incorporates potential failures and adaptation over multiple iterations, with the understanding that eventually the team develops a field-tested solution. Once the team has established a field-tested solution, they can then engage other, sometimes new, partners in dissemination. These steps in the upper right include increased awareness, replication and scale of the solution, wider application, and eventually large-scale impact. As we go through this course, we will talk about what LaserPulse considers to be the four key pillars of research translation. Partnership, process, translation product, and dissemination. These four areas are also reflected in the translation criteria for the LaserPulse request for applications for research translation grants. At the core of effective research translation is effective partnership between researchers and other groups, practitioners, donors, government, private sector, who will apply and use the outcome of the research. The earlier partnerships can be established and the clearer the understanding of goals and outcomes, the better. It's important at this stage to look at partners and establish their abilities and means to assist in research translation and eventually dissemination. Importantly, Research will impact groups on the ground, real people with real problems. Find partners who can connect you to those people to learn about their concerns and what they would find helpful and how they can assist in and benefit from research translation. Knowing and understanding each other's goals, priorities, constraints, and incentives can all help establish meaningful and productive partnerships. This kind of deep collaboration from the onset can often yield the most effective research translation solutions. This kind of deep partnership does take work. However, it is important to see the enormous benefits that can come from such collaboration. Strong partnership with practitioners can help researchers identify real world research priorities, increase research impact, establish relationships with key actors, learn more about on-the-ground challenges, and collaborate with field experts on implementation ideas. Conversely, strong partnerships with researchers can help practitioners root their work in evidence, integrate research into current and future programming, learn about emerging sectoral trends, test emerging innovations and discoveries, and co-develop field-tested solutions to development problems. When carried out effectively, such collaboration uses the strong points of NGOs, researchers, and policymakers to result in products, practices, and policies that have built-in uptake. You can view here expertise and limitations of partners. Consider pooling expertise together toward mitigating limitations. Collaborative partnerships can be formal through large donor-funded projects or programs, 
These partnerships are usually undertaken after a relationship of trust is built. Partnerships draw on the strengths of all partners. However, sometimes they are based on immediate need and opportunity, which can present some clashes of culture. The following slides show some examples of formal partnerships drawing on past experiences of LaserPulse Consortium member collaborations. USAID Guinea's Collaborative Agriculture Education and Market Improvement Program to Strengthen Sustainable Agriculture and Improve Adoption of Proven Technologies by Ghanaian Farmers. A partnership among Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital in Malawi, Purdue, and Save the Children to facilitate kangaroo mother care. Collaborative partnerships can also be semi-formal or informal through small funding amounts to test a concept as a potential solution or to adapt a solution from one context to another. In this case, the partnership might be new, usually arisen through a matchmaking or a partnership opportunity to bring together the researcher and NGO partner. The following slides offer examples of variations in less formal projects. cloud-based emergency response system developed between Purdue and Catholic Relief Services. The Purdue Utility Platform, developed in collaboration with a Columbian University and farmers cooperatives. And a collaborative program to engage former homeless youth in Kenya in engineering skills and problem-solving processes. A range of partnership models exist on a spectrum of small to large and informal to formal. Some examples include short-term tasks and consultancies, jointly funded research, small agreements with no formal funding, programs and degrees, institutional level partnerships, and network or alliance partnerships. Explore what kind of partnership would be most appropriate and effective for your goals. While deep collaboration is ideal, it's not always easy. Sometimes deep collaboration can be difficult, particularly as partners wrestle with certain aspects of the partnership, like different organizational culture, structures, and systems, establishing the terms of the arrangement, timelines, incentives and values, approaches to intellectual property, definitions of success, and what your approaches are toward donors and finances. Think about a time in your experience where you have gone through some challenges in a partnership. What kinds of things did you find difficult? And looking at some of the challenges that you have identified, what might be some ways to respond to those challenges?